Grieving moms matter. That was the message today at an event in Orange Mound. It drew a crowd. Grieving moms matter. So big, there weren't enough seats there for everyone. WREG's Alan Self was there. He's live with the details tonight. Hey, I'm think about this, man. I want you to think about these gliders, man. They gliders. They had a grieving moms matter event, and there weren't enough chairs, man. There weren't enough seats. In Memphis, they had a grieving moms matter, and there weren't enough seats, man. People had to sit on the floor and stand up. <laughs> Think about that, man. Grieving moms matter. That was the message today at an event in Orange Mound. It drew a crowd so big there weren't enough seats there for everyone. WREG's Alan Self was there. He's live with the details tonight. Hey, Alan. Hello, Shay. Tonight, people from all over Memphis came together in Orange Mound to support grieving mothers who lost loved ones to violence. I wrote the women's names down. So when I got to like 10 women, I told my daughter, I said, I'm going to cook lunch and do a, a, a luncheon with these women where each one of these women had lost a child. Memphis resident Angelina Ross created the event, Grieving Moms Matter, while still trying to deal with the overwhelming trauma of her own son's death. She says her son was killed in an accident stemming from a shooting months ago. She says because he was an engaged community activist, she feels it's her duty to stand in his place, turning her... So he was a community activist. He got killed in an accident. What? She feels it's her duty to stand in his place, turning her sadness into something positive. And that's why I asked each mother, these the 20 some women, where I laid in my bed at night crying, write these children, mothers' names down. And these are their kids. This is about them now. At today's event, mothers shared heart-wrenching testimonies about losing their children to violence, including Shakira Carpenter, a mother who's approaching the three-year anniversary of her son's tragic death, a story your news leader covered. We need each other. It's hard. This waking up every day without your child is hard. Carpenter says years later, she's still fighting for answers. Court is still going on. We scheduled to go to trial this Monday, July 29th. I got a lot of mixed emotions. I, it, it's, I'm, I'm reliving the moment. I'm reliving the moment. I'm, I'm reliving that anger. I'm reliving, reliving that sadness. Grief counselors like Mary Elizabeth Jones were on hand to offer emotional guidance. It, it is truly a blessing to be able to walk alongside other people who are hurting and to be able to help them realize that although grief is a journey and grief is not something we get over, grief is something we get through. Memphis police officers and Memphis Mayor Paul Young also showed up to the emotional gathering to offer support. I got a text and someone asked me to come. Uh, one of the mothers that has recently experienced uh, the loss of her son and I wanted to show show up. I wanted to be present. I, I thought that it, I think that it's important that the mayor stands in solidarity with all of these families that have experienced this unnatural order, where parents are having to bury their children as a result of gun violence, and it's unacceptable. Uh, and we aren't going to accept it as a community. The organizer of this event, Angelina Rosser, says her son's death is still unresolved. She plans on uh, hosting another event in September. For your news leader, I'm Alan Self, WREG News Channel 3. Disappointment in East Oakland tonight over the latest commercial burglary. Burglars kicked down doors and ransacked 16 Ooh. businesses in the troubled Hagenberger Corridor. They're all located inside an office building on Collins Drive, right behind the Denny's restaurant on Hagenberger that shut down earlier this year, citing crime. Dahlin is live there as business owners and workers are cleaning up the mess. Don? Yeah, they are cleaning up indeed. They finished vacuuming most of the broken glass, as you can see from this broken door here. But there's still a lot of damage on this second floor right here. You can see this right here belongs to a business. Yeah, that was kicked open. Here's another door right here. 
also kicked open. Now, each suite belongs to a single business. As you can see, many doors, many businesses here. Here's another door. You can see, kicked down right here. The lock fell to the ground. So a lot of damage throughout this location here. We're talking about construction businesses. We're talking about nonprofit organizations, even a barber shop. Surveillance footage capture thieves kicking down a door as people search through the business. You can hear more burglars kicking down other doors in the background. It's unclear how many thieves were inside. Building co-owner Ken Houston says the thieves cut through two layers of fencing to get into the property around 2.30 Saturday morning. And you can see the fresh cut marks on here, the fresh cut. Burglars Ooh. first broke into the new podcast studio in a shipping here. container. And we have a, a, a podcast unit where we teach children how to use technology and where <laughs> you can speak your voice. They use a crowbar right here. They busted the window here and they stole all our, our computer tops, laptops, mics, cameras. That was just the beginning. After they cleaned out the podcast studio, thieves broke a back door to go into the office building. Look at this, Doc. Damn. Look at this. Right here, you can see where they kicked it in. The burglars kicked down almost every single door to ransack all the businesses. And they kicked this one open. And this tenant just moved in here. You can see her boxes. She's just moving in. So you think she's going to want to stay here with this happening to her? I don't think so. Kenton says 16 businesses in this two-story building, most of them Black-owned and a few Hispanic businesses. Most of them Black-owned, man. And a few Hispanic, man. So Black and Brown, they destroying Black and Brown businesses. Ain't that a motherfucker, man? Yes. And they kicked this one open. And this tenant just moved in here. You can see her box as she's just moving in. So you think she's going to want to stay here with this happening to her? I don't think so. Kenton says 16 businesses in this two-story building, most of them Black-owned and a few Hispanic businesses. The businesses range from construction to a barber shop. Born and raised in Oakland is more a disappointment because seeing how the city used to be and now you have to stay on alert. You got to remain vigilant. Barber Chris Prater discovered the break-in when he opened his shop at 9 o'clock in the morning. He called 911. A lot of loyal, good people come and say support local businesses, but how long can it last when you have constant crime? As small minority businesses, when things happen like this, it's just a big setback. And it can have, it can have some people shut their doors down. We live in a place where you know people just feel like they can get away with crime and 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 you know it's sad you know real sad um they took my laptop with my uh, all my business information on it bank accounts everything so now i have to call the bank and cancel everything the thieves left with cash yeah. tools laptops and other valuables the break-in happened just a few days after the mayor police chief and other department heads came to visit the office building and this dead end street because of ongoing crime wow the mayor the police chief wow this is embarrassing man they playing with y'all mayor and police chief they playing with y'all man these thugs is like man they they think it's a game man show them who's show them what's what man they can't destroy 16 poc businesses man after y'all just went down there and toured the facility you gotta start throwing out handing out some years to these guys man stop playing with these dudes man The mayor, police chief, and other department heads came to visit the office building and this dead end street because of ongoing crime concerns related to the homeless encampment. The RV dwellers moved in after Denny shut down, and now workers and customers have to drive past the encampment to get to the office building. We need help to keep this city alive because if they leave, 
What's going to happen with this area? If they leave, what's going to happen? Look what's right there. The only reason why it's not down here is because of the activity, the positive activity we have out here and the blocks that was placed here to stop them from blocking and parking and on the sidewalk. If this, if we weren't here, this it would be a wrap, Doc. It would be a wrap. The business owners say the thieves may not be connected to the encampment, but it highlights the many challenges they face. Ken says it's so hard for businesses. Them long ass arms, man. Them long ass orangutan arms, man. Highlights the many challenges they face. Ken says it's so hard for businesses to survive. I'm a son of Oakland, Doc. I feel like leaving. I feel so down right now. We're now live on the first floor. You can see this broken window here. You can see it's now boarded up. And on this side, this is a flooring company. And you can see the damage right here. Glass door, broken. Folks ransacked this place, took off. I'm going to keep you guys walking right here. Here is another office right here. See this door, the violence that they put in here, they kicked and pretty much destroyed this door here. So all throughout first and second floor, a lot of damage. Now they were in the process of setting up surveillance cameras. So very limited footage available. Oakland police did show up about three hours after the first 911 call. They took the evidence uh, and took the report. But business owners here are not very optimistic that the thieves will get caught. Live here in East Oakland, I'm Dahl, and I'll send it back to you, Brian. Yeah, in Oakland, that is Dahl, and uh, thanks very much. This all comes after more and more businesses have abandoned the area. Crime, the big reason, and the departure of the Oakland A's only makes things worse. In addition to Denny's, a nearby In-N-Out closed, and multiple Starbucks locations in a Black Bear Diner, so will the Hilton Oakland Airport Hotel. That's closing next month. When survivors speak, change happens. And survivors of Philadelphia's gun violence are making sure their voices are heard as they turn their pain into power. When you talk to crime victims, the two things that we want the most is what happened to us. We don't want it to happen again. We also don't want it to happen to uh, anyone else. A room full of survivors gathered today at a church in the city's King Sessing neighborhood to share their experiences and call for change. We will be reaching every I wanted to support As with Thomas, is a national public safety leader with the group Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice. He's traveling the country this summer, meeting with those affected by crime firsthand. One of the things that we are doing is really working to advocate for things like trauma recovery uh, centers in communities across uh, Philadelphia and across the state to actually help people experience crime and violence, get the help and support that they need to heal and recover. His visit to Philadelphia comes as the city sees a 37% drop in homicides compared to the same time last year. There have also been 403 fewer shootings as of July 23rd. That's according to the latest city data. Advocates. 403 fewer shootings, man. That's amazing, man. Shout out to the new mayor of Philly, man. Shout out to her, man. She said she was going to do something about the crime. Shout out to her. Even though it's still ridiculous, it's, 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 everything's relative. For Sun City, they're doing very good in Philadelphia this year. Say while it's progress, numbers don't matter to victims and their families. People feel left alone. People feel all alone. Um, and nobody really cares. And we want them to know that we do. Yolanda Jennings is a survivor of domestic violence and sexual assault. She's lost her sister and a cousin to domestic violence and says her son was recently shot and killed by police in Ohio while suffering a mental health crisis. It's just really important that all the stuff that I've been through isn't in vain. And so that I can help somebody else get through it so that they can see, you know. David DeHart. Says Van Jones on CNN was crying about his Uncle Joe. Did you know Jeff Bezos gave him $10 million after George Floyd? Yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. Van, he, that $10 million has been gone. Four years? A son, man. $10 million to a son, man, in four years, man. He broke now, man. He need another, he need another stimulus, man. That's why he crying, man. I got through it, you know, together we can get through this too. The conversation about change did not end today. This fall, survivors from our area will join thousands of others from across the country at a first of its kind rally in our nation's capital.
We have all the details for you on our website, NBC10.com slash find it on 10. In Center City, I'm Brian Sheehan, NBC10 News. Don't know, you just don't know.